On March 8, 2007, six-year-old Christopher Michael Berrios left his grandmother's trailer to go outside and play at a neighbor's house on a swing. That's the last time the little boy would be seen alive. While the Georgia State Sex Offender Registry listed one of his accused killers, George David Edenfield, as incarcerated, the fact is the man was living directly across the street from 150 Horseshoe Lane, little Christopher's home. This is another example of why the Sex Offender Registry is a useless tool and should not be relied upon to protect your children. Also living across the street were George Edenfield's parents, Peggy and David Edenfield. David Edenfield also has a past criminal history of incest. According to police, the father and son Edenfield took turns sodomizing little Christopher, while Peggy Edenfield, the mother, watched and masturbated. Eventually, they allegedly strangled little Christopher and then dumped his body alongside a stretch of road about a mile from the home. It is also being reported that George Edenfield is retarded to some degree. George Edenfield, George, was in court just three days earlier on a charge of living less than 1,000 feet from a park, a violation of George's tough residency restriction laws. This forced George Edenfield to move in with his parents, who lived directly across the street from little Christopher. In an incredible twist of fate, it has been discovered that little Christopher's father himself is also a registered sex offender due to an offense of statutory rape from about 10 years ago. We speculate that perhaps these very laws forced Christopher and his dad into one of the few areas not off limits to George's registered sex offenders and consequently across the street from a very dangerous family with a history of abusing young children thus placing little Christopher directly in harm's way. This tragic story sadly exemplifies what we at OperationAwareness.com and So Clear Media have been trying to get through to the public and lawmakers since the creation of these sites, and that is that the Sex Offender Registry, as it currently stands, makes no distinction between violent and nonviolent offenders, between consensual sex acts and forcible rape, between the dangerous and the non-dangerous. Little Christopher paid the price for this ill-thought-out legislation with his very life. It is the opinion of this writer that lawmakers have just as much blood on their hands as the Eaton Fields themselves. How many more children like Christopher have to be raped and murdered before the public wakes up to what is really going on and demands change? Interestingly, the mainstream media has been actively been suppressing the fact that Christopher's dad is also a registered sex offender on the Georgia State Sex Offender Registry. One would think reporters would take this information and run with it. The only reason I can think of for that is that if people knew the truth, the state of Georgia participated, indeed mandated, that this boy and his family move into one of the few areas left in Georgia where registered sex offenders can live, the tide would begin to turn. People in mass would finally begin to realize just how screwed up the system is. To treat someone convicted of statutory rape, meaning the act was consensual except that the, the state says that due to the age of one of the parties, it is a crime, the same way you treat someone convicted of molesting or raping a six or seven year old child is indeed far beyond intelligent reasoning. Yet this is what is occurring across the country every day. Georgia lawmakers hungry for votes, obviously care less about the lives it is needlessly destroying, including Christopher's. The question is, how many more children will have to die horrific deaths before something concrete and rational is done to protect these children from those who really are dangerous? Time will tell. Unfortunately, it will be too late for little Christopher. Unbelievably, Little Christopher never made it into the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's database or their website. Again, leaving me wonder, just what is it that this organization does? As an end note, I am curious to see whether or not the flock of vultures who claim to want to protect our children, Mark Class, John Walsh, Mark Lunsford, Will they support and surround Christopher Barrio's dad, seeing as though he is also a registered sex offender? It will certainly make an interesting follow-up to this tragic story. 
I'm Amanda Rogers, Senior Staff Writer for OperationAwareness.com and a member of SoClair Media. Please see our website at www.OperationAwareness.com for more information. Thanks for watching.